All right, so we're also gonna be playing some of the updated mono blue selective memory deck, uh, actually giving it some attention that it deserves. We were playing it in between rounds of yesterday's challenge a little bit and just had to like, like concede like every match to focus on the uh, on the challenge, but the deck was looking pretty dang good. I ended up adding Disrupting Shoal to the main deck, cutting the Spell Snares and two Preordains. We played against the build too, and Shoal looked pretty dang good, and I want to test it, so. It's, it's, I think it's pretty cool that we have not only Flare of Denial, but also Shoal, just have a lot of proactive counter spells. All right, gonna keep Adelphia this. Gonna keep this. <laughs> I don't know. The, the Adelphias are creeping in too much to the vernacular. What is this deck bad against? Uh, Besage you. <laughs> it seems like the main thing. So, like, I saw that we played against Titan one time and we stomped them, but they also didn't draw Besage you at all. So I, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm a little bit curious, like what that matchup is like normally like. If the Besages are just really, really good against you, or if the zero mana counter spells plus fast combo just is always going to be a good formula against them. I'm unsure. Kind of hope this is this is Boros so that we can just like, um. See what that matchup is like, but yeah, I just I I it does it seems like that we're we're good against opposing combo decks. It seems like we're good against energy. I don't know that Frog is a favorable matchup, but we we like stomped it. We 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 were one and one against Frog last league. We stomped it the first time. We lost kind of a tough three game set the second time. Uh, all the, I think we're I think we're kind of favored game one against them, and then Cyber Games were 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 probably pretty unfavored. And it, like those, the, the, like those dynamics where your very favorite game one, unfavored cyborg games are always tough to evaluate who is favored overall. Um, kind of hard to say. All right, they are surveilling, so probably up against Jessica. I bet the Jessica matchup is great. The Jessica matchup is great. Mono green with recross. Well, <laughs> recross is pretty good. You lose every, everything else, uh, but who needs everything else? Okay, uh, they're not just guy. My opponent has decided to spend their their time here casting a voice of resurgence. Uh, I think I may even be in, in exceptionally kind and trigger their voice of resurgence for them. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a, a trainer here, looking for an untapped land to try to win the game with next turn. Now we don't find an untapped land. Let's go ahead and take Selindi Vision so that we have Shoal X equals three, which could counter it's a fairy time raveler on their turn or force of negation on our turn with the um disrupting shoal. If these energy decks are shifting towards a higher curve for ring, do you think it'd be worth running a triumph for Leyland Binding? In Jeskai, I yeah, you need to play you need to play Leyland Binding in Jeskai, I think. I posted a Leyland building Jeskai build earlier this week. We played it. I liked it, but in the Through the Breach Ring Energy metagame, I you, you should play as far as headquarters and a Grixis Triumph, I think, and, and play for Leyland Binding in your Jeskai decks. I I don't I don't really think it makes a lot of sense not to. I do think there's still a lot of nuance, you know. In and how you build it, you know, ta to Tamio, to not to Tamio. Tamio is worse with Leyline Binding. There's there's a lot going on. Okay, so this is a value Char Charlotte's Agent into a White Orchid Phantom. Do I shoal this? Phantom is very good against me. Also, how many, they, they only revealed the Phantom, so I don't get to see any more of their deck. So, I think I kind of don't want to shoal... Because I need to draw an untapped land anyways for me to combo kill them. It seems like I just want to save the shoal. Why is it so hard to remember the name of the Grixis Triumph? It is Xander's Lounge. Honestly, though, I think it's just better to say Grixis Triumph because genuinely more people will know what I'm talking about if I say Grixis Triumph <laughs> instead of <laughs> Xander's Lounge. Okay, so it's not block in case we draw Flare. Also, don't really need to block, right? This is the bant list in the challenge. I didn't see it. Uh, if someone wants to link it, it looks kind of cool. I bet it's a. Is it a birthing ritual shell? These these like bant birthing ritual value shells. I've had a lot of questions about them, and I I haven't really been playing them myself. Okay, so we did draw untapped land. We could um we could wait. Waiting is bad against. Or it's kind of good against Mosaic even. Yeah, we'll just we'll just wait a turn. Is he Garrick trophy with with Leyland Binding Jeskai? No, I, I don't even know who Garrick is, honestly. 
But congratulations to them. Yeah, I don't think the six damage really matters. Well, we can counterspell the sky a skyclave or a phantom. Seems like I should use this. Yeah. Congratulations, opponent. A voice of resurgence trigger has gone on the stack. A pretty rare thing. Now, uh, we didn't draw three, so we are kind of cold to a Force of Negation. That could be a card that's in their deck. Not a card that's in their deck. Let's go. Okay, so Bant, Value, Town. Uh, Consign counters the Knight ETB, which seems pretty nice. Is it going to be relevant against like anything else? No. That might just be enough, though. Oh, it counters the, the Starless Agent Cascade. Deck is for ritual all creatures. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a few few of them. Very hard deck to uh, look at. I'm going to cut the Jace and... You're just play... I mean, the fact that these are one man on the draw seems pretty good. I cut the Teachings on the draw. This is the Bant Ritual deck. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody posted it. I mean, I've seen, like, I've, I've had, like, deck techs for these, and I usually think that they're really hard to look at. <laughs> I've, I kind of just prefer the Celestia builds. Oh, no, Gaddic Teague. So I guess I should have brought in the Bounce card. Or bring him in for game three if we get Teagued. Gonna try this hand, though. Cool deck. I guess we have, we have Sink into the Super, actually. So Teague isn't actually even unbeatable. Can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So this is going to say no to Lotus Bloom. Not exactly right on time, Disrupting Shoal, but we will allow you to hang out. Let's take a Teachings over second copy of Selective Memory. Don't need the second copy that often. What does Selective Memory do? So this says, search your library for any number of non-land cards, exile them, then shuffle. Um, our entire deck is non-lands because we're playing all the MDFCs, including a bunch of new ones from MH3. So this resolves, and we basically just make our entire deck like just a Thassa's Oracle or you know whatever we need our deck to be to win the game. Um, yeah, seems like I should just leave the Augur in my hand so I have Shoal X equals 2 available. Now, I don't actually think we even cast a single Selective Memory last league, which is pretty funny. Won all our games with Belchers, just kind of the one we drew instead of uh, the Belchers. Just thinking about just uh, consigning the trigger end of turn, but then, of course, they have the trigger next turn, so let's go ahead and show this. And then we're going to have a Flare of Denial available. We're not going to be able to cast this with the Draineth Magistrate out there. Potentially two counter spells up next turn. Now, the big problem with this deck, right, is this part. That the interface for exiling your, ma your library of Magic Online is very slow. And uh, pretty laggy. Although it's actually going a little bit faster today than yesterday thank you alacrin with the resub glad you like the tie um well we're doing this for charity research i tell you what it's all worth it raising money for the american cancer society this is what it's all about uh, this is what it's all about if y'all see any cards unselected <laughs> let me know that was a <laughs> yesterday y'all were a big help <laughs> Of all the combos you can click through, this is certainly not the worst. No control A, no drag boxes. If you could just click faster too, it would be. What happens if I haven't even like really tried clicking faster? Yeah, just so. Wait, does that did that work? Like 
maybe the lag wouldn't be so bad if it, if it was a bit more a bit more clear which ones were selected. Like it, like this Salindi vision didn't get selected. This one didn't get selected. This one didn't get selected. Yeah, it's a bit too much of a mess. Yeah, this one didn't get selected, and it's it's kind of impossible to tell. Did I accidentally click the Oracle? Didn't. Yeah, so it would be cool if they would update this. Especially because it seems like this deck has a very real shot of being a real modern metagame deck. And I did, mi I did miss one. <laughs> I did miss one. There are two cards in my library right now. I missed a sync. Sorry, chat. Maybe it's just like a color blindness thing. Okay, so I mean, we're 50 50 to win next turn, and it, it does seem like this is a game where we'll be fine. The best thing is to check the green horizontal line. For, for me, it's just like not super visible. But yeah, the interface on this, not, not very good. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to ask Esker to bring Athena inside. Hard to again, Lotus Bloom, <laughs> Charbelcher, two lands. We are on the draw. We don't have any untapped lands. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. Would it be a reasonable idea for commoners to go to the sideboard? It would be reasonable, yes. I would really like to see like a kind of concrete idea for what it is we're doing with those commandeers. Because I don't really know like what it is you're trying to target with commandeer. I don't know if that makes sense, but... I, I don't like I don't know what what matchups like we need shoring up via commandeer, but ob obviously it, it is going to be it's going to be an option. Do you think there's a, a way to build modern doomsday with selective memory? I mean, or is that card still just better in a Belcher shell than some deck? I mean, what, what you're seeing now is is the best way to build selective memory, playing it and goblin shell Bel char Belcher. There's not going to be like. Like the thing about it, it's it's not really doomsday because like cards from the graveyard don't go in. It's four mana instead of three. There are no rituals in this format. You can't play gush. I don't know. It's just like I, I don't I think I you could just you could play just selective memory if you wanted and not play Belcher, but uh to be honest, Belcher has seemed like the better <laughs> the better card in the deck by a pretty significant amount. Okay, so it's nice to have some interaction here. Oh, Maybe I should have left the four drop in my hand, but they have the halflings, so it doesn't seem like I'm going to get to counter a a Yog Moth here. Put a forest into their graveyard. So uncounterable Agatha Soul Cauldron. Shout out delighted halfling. We're not necessarily too scared of uh the Grist Cauldron here. We do need to find an untapped land. Thankfully, Trainer does dig pretty dang deep. Yeah, I mean, she also gave us uh, the dual spell lands. The, the These are mostly in the deck, I think, so that they are four drops for Disrupting Shoal. Which, otherwise, you just have your selective memories, which you don't necessarily want to pitch. But also, like, they can find you, like, a proactive counter spell, which is nice. So this ticks down. Are they going to besage you, mean? Well, that is uh, bad news. Their clock is still very slow at the moment, but with the halflings, it's we don't have that much that we can counter out of their deck. Commandeer is for through the breach, right? I mean, is commandeer? We have we have four force of negations. We have four flare of denials. Um, through the breach, commandeer grabbing the one ring from through the breach is nice, but it, it I don't know. I think that matchup is probably very good at the moment. Um, stealing a through the breach specifically isn't even that impressive. Although stealing a Kozlex command could be really good. I, I I definitely think you could play them. I definitely think you could play them. I'm just not sure. Uh, how exactly we're wanting to include them. So no attacks obviously means my opponent has a Court of Colleg in their hand. Um, if I can draw a Seagate Wreckage, we could shoal 
the Court of Calling. We also do get our Lotus Bloom down here. Yeah, your ring probably does get cut against you. Makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play the, the Charbelcher this turn. Because I'm planning on using pitching the, sh the Seagate to the Shoal. <laughs> Maybe we get, like, Cord for Haywire Mited, but tough to play around. If they have cord, like a bowmaster cord, like how can they really not go for cord for Yawgmoth in this spot? Maybe they know about the shoal. I mean, not, nothing is okay. No, <laughs> you can do nothing. They graveyard a trawler. No, we're not dead to like grist ballista stuff no not even like really close seagate comes with the upside bow and untap land i mean yeah but we can't uh seagate pitch seagate and play it as an untap land for belcher next turn um right now they have two cards in their hand and they are they are court of calling Revealing Seagate would tell them not to cord. Maybe. I mean, they would have to be, like, super, like, tuned in to what our deck is doing, and it feels like our deck is, it was, like, still a little too fresh, you know? Oh, Flare over Seagate. Maybe. I guess, could they grist my... Could they Could they not cauldron my... Or they could kill my Thundertrap Trainer with either Ballista or the... I thought this had three, two loyalty already. So X equals one, cannot show. Yeah, but Flare can't really be better because of the cauldron. They get a young wolf. Oh, I missed that they had the yog in the yard too. And that is gonna be lethal. Let's go to game two against yog. I think we wanna bring in our into the flood malls. Cut our Jace. Here you go. Down a counter spell. Down a preordain. I think that's okay. You have to dig out my Seagate restorations for this deck. How's at least what I miss? So, yeah, well, I mean, did they need second Young Wolf? The thing is, Young Wolf, Yogmoth goes plus Ballista with the Cauldron goes really crazy. So they, they sack their Young Wolf draw a card they put a counter on the young wolf with undying they remove that counter to ping me via the walking ballista and so um they they effectively have um pay one life deal one damage and they had a bunch of extra damage via attacking and a few other counters from the cauldron and they, the counter on the bowmaster so that they, they they could have dealed like 22 23 or something like that consign I, do you want to bring in consign just for cauldron doesn't seem I don't think I want to bring in Consign just for Cauldron. Yeah, put on the Mulligan to six. I think Harbinger is too easy for them to play around. A little too inconsistent, but you could bring it in. Consign to stop and dying. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the strategy that we're trying to play. Like... That, that'll stop a young wolf undying when my opponent has Yawgmoth uh, going, which to, it just it doesn't sound like a winning line to me. Could be could be more of a winning line than I would think, I guess. Okay, so we're mostly looking for uh, selective memory here. We didn't find one. I'm just going to go ahead and take it on tap land. It, it is always cool when you cast Thundertrap Trainer, like, okay, that would have been a brick if all of our lands were not also spells. Is this a Spike Bruce? So this is an evolution of a European tournament. Um, playing a very different build. They're playing Snapback, their main decking Force of Negation. They weren't playing the, the Flare package. Um, and so we've been working on it, just mostly adding Counterspell and the Flare package. I think Counterspell is also a card that's like just kind of a mandatory include. 
Um, at the moment, I feel that way at least. All right, so looking for selective memory, number two card I guess you would take would be uh, another flare. There's a selective memory though. Now you have two untapped lands in my hand, so I think I think our ability to just thinking about shoal numbers. Seagate ca Seagate countering a uh, core X equals four is probably more relevant than a three. Maybe we just bounce this. Don't think so. It's kind of close though. Were they also a Narsa at Merfolk Looter? Uh, no, but I mean, I, I, I would. There's no chance Merfolk Looter is a playable modern card. Like, there's many cards that are better than Merfolk Looter. I don't think Counterspell is better than More Speed with the Talisman. Um, I think it is. <laughs> um, Counterspell is. A lot of times, like a time walk in modern, that also protects your combo. Counterspell is a cheap way, to, cheap way to protect your combo, cheap way to interact with your opponent's decks. Counterspell is one of the best cards in modern. Kind of, kind of, kind of simply put, I guess you could say, Counterspell is one of the best cards in modern. It is super important, uh, super important for any deck that can cast it easily. And this deck can cast it very easily because every deck is is blue. It is. Huge modern staple. Talisman is a card that is bad to draw multiples all the time. Talisman is bad to draw if you don't have a four mana payoff. Counterspell is good to draw. You could just you could just have a hand like, okay, I have counterspell on turn two and some card selection. I can keep this hand. Uh, if you don't have that, your hand might just be a mulligan. You know, there's a, there's a lot um, a lot of reasons to play counterspell instead. How close is this to MTGA's builds? I haven't I haven't seen their build. I have a. Uh, I honestly, his humor is just not, <laughs> I just can't handle it. <laughs> not for me. All right. Shoal's a good top deck. The clicks are going to take forever. How do you just search for DFC with lands on the back? Uh, I have all of them somewhat memorized. Uh, the the vast majority of them are in they're they're all in MH three and they're all in call time so you just kind of go through those. Let me know if I miss any of them. <laughs> Don't think the this one registered. Zendikar Rising. Did I say call time? Yeah, Zendikar Rising. But they're, they're basically all MH, all MH three in Zendikar Rising. So I just go through those. I don't, I don't think that there's any other land MDFCs that are modern legal at least that are not in one of those two sets. A lot, uh, a lot better to resolve in paper. Okay, I don't think I missed any. Looking for no green outline. Yeah, I was thinking Glasspool Mimic to copy the things. So I think Teachings is a little bit better because, like, you you want you want them to ideally be uh, instants and sorceries so that you can. Um, Find them off of your two drops. No, these are Zendikar Rising, right? Yeah. All right. It's it's also cool to be able to do this with two two counter spells they can cast on your turn or your opponent's turn. My opponent still has this cauldron, but they exiled the Yogmoth, so I'm not so worried about that anymore. Oh, you'll be playing Mimic over Seagates because you don't have them. Yeah, yeah, you could just play. You know, I I would play the like the blue red like. The, the blue red tap land that draws two and discards one at random uh, instead because it's at least findable off your two drops. Now, one thing too is like I don't really need to counter a Yog Moth, right? I guess I I guess I would counter a Yog Moth because that's just gonna tap them out and like they the, like all they could do is go like land besage you, but then if we counter Yog, they can't besage you, and we would still have a second counter up. But Besage also doesn't even doesn't even do anything. Yeah, just just I don't I don't think that that is counterable or something I should counter. Maybe I should say they find a, a thought seed. Oh, so they can't put thought seeds into their hand. They put wall of roots into their hand. I bet that happens a lot in paper. People putting instants and sorceries into their hand off Rumble. 
Yeah, it was Raph Levy who uh, set up the cancer marathon. Definitely an excellent cause. Looks like we're going to game three. It would just be a better impulse. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I know it would be. Go to game three. Maybe I should have played Arena. I think on the draw, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go minus one of the, the two drops. No, maybe, sorry, we'll, let's keep the two drops. I think the two drops are mostly just better than Preordain, and they are a Bowmaster deck. It is really nice to be, like, a blue combo deck that just isn't, like, really fragile to Bowmaster, too. Something else I like about this deck. Okay, so on the draw for game three against Yawgmoth, we have one tapped MDFC, one untipped MDFC, and two Shoals. I think I think Shoal on the draw is really important, and, like... This this is also an example of like like this hand having counterspell is like is it's much better than having a talisman you know I I think I think that you could play some talismans but I think that would probably be over like the twenty fourth land then over counterspells so if I show would I show malevolent rumble here. No, would I show Agatha's Soul Cauldron? I also I don't I don't know. Okay, the graveyard of cauldron. Does that mean they're more likely to have one? Thankfully, they they just don't cast anything, and I don't have to make any any difficult choices. Probably will play Seagate, so we can maybe show a three drop next turn. And then I think I'm interested in digging as deep as possible this turn because these next couple moments are going to be really complicated, and so. Being a little bit deeper is important. Yeah, it, it is it is kind of like you would think that Bowmaster will like in theory be a good card against like mono blue combo, but we just have two preordains that we boarded out. Not not worried about it. Love to find a flare here. Although notably now talisman would be, would be better than, than counter spell. <laughs> or whatever that's worth. All right, let's flare this. I only have one selective memory. So I cast Augur first, so I can try to find any land, even a tap one. We do find a tap one. The next turn we can. Belcher or selective memory. Certainly leaning towards memory. Yeah, we've raised a ton of money so far. It's really exciting. I'm very proud of y'all. We've gotten through all the tiers that... Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure how far we'd make it in today. And y'all have exceeded expectations. Very, very proud of y'all today. Best draw is Flare, I guess. I'm just going to cast the memory... Belcher is a bit more fragile to stuff. We have Shoal, X equals 2, X equals 4 up. Not that the X equals 4 is likely going to be that relevant. Although the worst part is always <laughs> the molasses-like pace. The game slows too when you click through this. And it looks like I, I'm going to keep my beard too. <laughs> it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't exactly look at that at the beginning. Which is funny. No, you can't drag select. Um, I think the only thing we can do is buy a very expensive computer to reduce the lag. I literally cannot go over this build. Yeah, I think this build is really, really, really good. I think the initial draft was good too, but I think like, like snapback is just like not a modern playable card. You need to play counter spell. The flares, I think are like the flares and the augers and the otters are all very good. I was definitely wrong in my first draft to not play shoal. Shoal is like super, super mandatory. I'm sometimes like this with cards. I, I typically dis have dismissed for a long time, but obviously in a deck where basically every spell is a, is a, every card is a blue spell. Just so much better. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. If the if the cards just like move to their own pile, there's there's like there's like a million ways to make this interface better. Yeah, if you could like if you could just select all and then like unselect the oracle, it would be better. Doomsday is a lot easier to resolve because you just have to click five cards. I don't really know how how do people resolve uh the the three mana recross the paths. Which is even worse than this. Yeah, you can't do control AI. We've tried it. But I will say Daybreak has been pretty active in their work on the client. This this could definitely be something that they update if this deck does end up becoming a big part of modern, which I think it, at, at the moment it seems like kind of incredible. All right, I don't think I missed any. Oh, with recross it's faster. Okay. Shoal XLC gate counter Merc tide. I, yeah, that almost came up earlier today. Oh, 15 bucks from lap. Thank you so much. Thank you, man leggings. All right. We are six and one on the day with this deck too, which is pretty exciting. Good day to be playing such an exciting deck as well. Okay, this hand has no lands though, so we're not gonna keep. It does have two castable spells. All right, keeping this, putting back one of the lands, I think. Just the tap land, I think. Because if we draw a tap land for turn, we'll have wanted to keep all untapped. Ross the 20. Well, so this is to the wrong link here. But if you if you go ahead and post it in the in the chat, we'll uh we'll get going. But that was that was to me not the not the charity. <laughs> have you ever cast Hydrox Especially? No, I think in theory you'll cast it like when you have flare in your hand sometimes. Okay, there's a dryad. Okay, Ragavan is not good in modern, period. Uh, it is definitely not worth splashing for in Hammer, which is... It's like, it's like why... Like, Ragavan's bad in modern. You don't want to splash for a bad card in a bad deck. I don't know. I, I don't know how to sugarcoat it. <laughs> uh, but that's that's what you've done. you splashed for a bad card in a bad deck. All right, we really want to find a Flare or a uh, Shoal here, so... To counter a ring. It's like, I don't know. I <laughs> this one was to me and not to the not to the cause. I I think I might I might just leave it at don't don't splash a bad card in the bad deck. Play four 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 four. Like you even just like also don't do this when you're gonna splash a card. Don't just take out all of your four ofs. <laughs> I the thing is called rules of three American Steel. Very cool name. But don't just take out all of your four ofs and then like put 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 a bunch, put your splash cards in as three ofs and call it a day. I, I also really don't like this strategy. Okay, so we do lose our selective memory, but uh, countering the ring is probably worth it here. So, yeah, I don't know that if I have any more any more advice than that. Please see the lands. Thanks. Okay, I'll take a look at the lands. Also donated to actual cause. Thank you for that. <laughs> the the two arid maces is <laughs> it's kind of funny. You should play four Urza sagas in your hammer deck. Um, I've actually always really liked the gemstone caverns in hammer, at least modern white mono white hammer. Something I've liked for whatever that's worth. Also, so I may cast teachings to find a flare. This game, I'm gonna grab a counter spell. Yeah, I think we'll just, let's just go tapped Seagate. Um, attack for one, leave the one three to block the two four. It's it's like you're you're especially if you have like four Springleaf drums. Like your color requirements are like not so harsh that you can't afford one more colorless land. I usually feel and just like helps you catch up on the draw, which can be a problem sometimes, of course. Oh, I guess they should have called it the two ring, huh? Well, uh, that is probably going to kill me unless I draw another selective memory soon. Or I guess Belcher in two turns because I have the Lotus Field coming down. Although this matchup is also probably very good. I don't know if I need to really 
worry so much about losing game one. So this ticks down. I did draw selective memory. Just need to think. So if I if I bolt in hydroelectric specimen or yeah, it's just just specimen here, I go down to nine. I'm dead to my opponent just having two lands, which seems seems likely that they'll have it, but um, doesn't really seem like doesn't seem like we're very likely to win if we don't. So I I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the the worst part of course is the clicks. Y'all remember what it was like when we had paid deck decks every day? It was just chaos. Yeah, we're, we're dead to we're dead to one fetch. We're dead to any two lands drawn at three cards. But there are combinations of cards my opponent can draw. They have to draw like they have to have like two dryad slash like dryad grazer potentially the one ring, um potentially Rin and six. Or like they have to have three out of those as four cards. It's so unlikely. We're also dead to one Valakit. Got to go through the motions, though. I'm starting to like this less than the Dark Pool, honestly. Because the, the, the lag is like... <laughs> the lag is really annoying. It's like some combos you just get to click through really fast, and like it's like ADHD fidgeting. This is like click, second, one, two, click, one, two, click. One, two, click. One, two, click. One, two. Next time we play this deck, I'll figure out something to do to entertain y'all in between. Yeah, not as many clicks. Yeah, not not getting carpal tunnel from this like we were with the dark pool. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll figure out a shape a new or selective memory deck. I started to build this deck a few times before the European list came out, and I in in my logs I basically always called it Shape Anew because I'm just confused the two different four mana sorceries. Is there a lot of advantage in playing Jace over the second Oracle? Um, yeah, you, you're going to lose to Consign to Memory um, too often if you don't play the Jace. This is something that I also thought I thought you should just play second Oracle, but I lost to Consign to Memory and um, immediately regretted it. Okay, they also get a surveil. It's just so hard, so hard for my opponent to not find two lands, a flare of cultivation, a valicate, a fetch land between the surveil, the draw step, and the two cards from the ring. But they can have they can have Ren and Six Dryad Grazer <laughs> uh, as bricks here. Right, that also gets the job done. Good, kind of good to know they're on that card, though. Okay, so let's bring in uh, the Force of Negations. And I think we're also wanting to bring in the Harbingers, I would imagine. And then... So, against combo decks, I've been boarding out Selective Memory plus the... Plus the Oracle. I wonder, should I instead be boarding out Lotus Bloom plus Belcher? Let's trade that despite uh, consigning myself to two more clicks. Is it Rena 6 just to win the fetch on? Oh, yeah, never mind. But maybe I should have just conceded and saved myself the clicks. Good to know they were on that card, how the Mighty Have Fallen used to be the deck's namesake, right? Yeah, yeah, just some builds are playing, like, Wish main deck instead. Some builds don't play any scape shift. Some builds do play scape shift. Just kind of depends. I agree, it's kind of funny. All right, so we're going to go Tapped Vision... Raise your surveil. Can you explain the Jace? Yeah, the Jace, they get the Jace is mostly in there so that um, if you cast your um, selective memory, you are not just going to be completely cold to your opponent casting a copy of a replicated consign. Yeah, seems like with like the zero mana counter spells, we're just going to take the take the memory. And because we have Oracle in our hand, we probably should like leave 
just just an untapped land as our last card. Oh, I guess we don't even need the untapped land because the Oracle only costs two. We should leave one card in our deck. Okay, let's not show that. Three cards in their hand. Presumably land for the Explorer. So we might lose to a Primeval Titan this game. So we can't, we obviously can't force that. Leave Flare for final protection. I mean, I, I kind of don't even know like what we're protecting from, but I, 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 yeah, I don't think we're supposed to counter for Flare of Cultivation here. Um, but maybe we're supposed to. We are kind of weak to. We are kind of weak to Titan at this point. I'm looking for land though, so we can cast Memory. No land, no keep. There we go. Play this since we have the untapped sink. Your turn. Tap stomping ground. Passing the turn. Well. <laughs> Next stop, Clickadelphia. I thank you all of y'all for tuning in today. Thank you, Ultimate Guard Live, for the raid. It's been a very successful charity stream so far. Appreciate all y'all tuning in. Appreciate y'all sitting through the clicks. Shout out again to Raf Levy for setting up the uh, this marathon stream. It's going to continue on, not just today. Going to continue on until Sunday tomorrow. If y'all want to uh, play along. Is clicking the going off part? I guess so, yeah. I mean, the clicking is... It, there's a lot of way... It, it's it, it's failed at like every possible point to be as miserable as possible. The lag makes it to where each click like, takes two seconds. There's no option to select everything. And the, the cards don't group together. And the green line is really, really hard to see. Maybe there's a way to automate the clicking. Set up an auto-clicker. With a built-in delay. I mean, this, this is a nice suggestion. This is never going to happen. Uh, maybe what should happen is people should donate for deck techs during the clicking. We see one from Benny Limit Fish, twenty bucks. If you want to post yours in the chat, I'd love to do your deck tech while clip while clicking. We can work together to make and create content in between in between these two second clicks. Thank you, Benny. It's a very good deck. Gorio Dinosaur Drift. It sounds like an incredible deck. Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, Vesuvian Drifter is, is a card that I uh, do despise. I bet you're using the three mana green white card that puts creatures on top of your library. Control A doesn't work. It, you know, Control A does work on some things on Magic Online, but not on this one though. Okay, so you're using the... No, you're using uh, Witch's Cottage instead to set up Vaultborn Tyrant Galta. Okay, so maybe consider... So what what is... Is it Congregation at Dawn? It puts three cards on top of your library. So you could... You could set up to where you're going Vesuvian Drifter and then you uh, have to untap with Vesuvian Drifter, which is the big problem with this, this stupid card. Um, and then you cast Congregation at Dawn to not only put a uh, galt on top of your library but underneath it you could put two more dinosaurs to cast um i like playing psychic frog these footsteps of the gorio are really funny they're so, it's funny how bad they are with uh, galta which has to deal oh galta has haste okay not so bad with galta you also have goria's vengeance okay okay I, i'm kind of li liking this i will say congregation of dawn very cool card probably maybe maybe too hard to set up Maybe too hard to set up. Um, one thing I really dislike about this deck is you, you, a big part of your plan is to just, we are just going to cast Vesuvian Drifter with no protection. We did not bother to cast a Thoughtseize ahead of time. Um, we're, we're just, we're just going to cast Vesuvian Drifter. Missed the teachings. I think I got it. 
and then I hope it lives. Not a very good plan. 20 bucks for deck tech, but you have to send it to the charity, not to me. I do you think there's a Vesuvian plan more being Ramus if that's fair? I mean, yeah, this build is very fun. You're you're definitely too you're definitely like two in on the of the plan. A little too fragile. Let's let's get let's get some thought seizes in there. Um, I think thought seizes is probably a more important card than bone shards. I probably just play four indulgence, zero otherworldly gaze. And I, I think I think that the congregation of dawn plan is really cool. If you go if you go more congregation of dawn, you can play um, Tidzuru and Hazaret the five mana card so like and then you can like that, that card has like haste if you have one or fewer cards in your hand and so you can go end of turn congregation has to i don't know how to say to zero or whatever the 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 team up card with hazaret you play that and then you you put like emrakul or galt or whatever you want on top and then you attack with it and put that card into play that's been a deck i've wanted to build for some time but it looks really bad <laughs> for whatever that's worth and i've never gotten around to it all right we're gonna keep the sand why suit today? Because we're hosting a ACL or ACS <laughs> charity research stream. And then Trinner with the 25 bucks. Thank you so much for your donation. If that's for a deck tech, maybe I'll save it for uh, the selective memory. My opponent plays a dryad. Should I should I flare the dryad or should I or should I shoal? Should I shoal this? I think no. This is Pioneer deck. It's a Cauldron, Ingus, Stonecoil, Frampton. Awesome. Let me, I'm not going to look at it just yet, if that's okay. Since I have this selective memory in my hand, we really, we really need to save it for these clicks. Oh, another flare. One, two, three. So I mean, I think we'll the Harbinger to like not really care too much about the um, the Valakit. Their hand should just be two mountains, right? Or maybe I, so I guess it's mountain mystery card. I will pro I'm probably taking my own flare of denial over any other card here. I'm uh, not lucky enough to have that option. I guess we'll take the disrupt the teachings over the the, the two mana days. And then uh, teachings can also be pitched to shoulder counter a one ring. Is this deck powerful? I think so. Yeah, we're six and one on the day. We had a good run with it yesterday too. Probably about to be seven and one. Farseek and modern. Yeah, Farseek actually got a lot better when they printed uh, the surveyor lands. Um, like this turned in this like basically added the text surveil one to Farseek. It was like a kind of a very funny, like errata to the card almost. Uh, I don't think we paid out the last prediction actually. We did four one the last league. So my opponent has exactly one card in their hand. They have surveilled a dryad into the graveyard, and then there's the ring. So we're gonna go ahead and shoal that pitching teachings. Everybody's new favorite zero mana card. Gonna go ahead and play untapped Seagate Restoration. Harbinger of the Tides. Might as well attack for one. And then we're gonna do a deck tech as we click next turn, probably. Remember that if you have Harbinger in play, your tapped MDFCs enter untapped if you play them as islands. If I draw a land, maybe we could just play. Okay, well, we've got a shoal. Not that there's too much that we're shoaling. Had a mono black go. I, I like the deck. I think we, we lost two very close matches early. I want to play it some more. Okay, so this is a Pioneer Tunnel Ingus Tunnel Ingus combo deck featuring uh, NT, Iron Apprentice, Grinning Ingus. Oh, Grinning Ingus, not Tunnel Ingus. Um, Stone Coil Serpent. So you turn your Stone Coil Serpent, or you, 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 Agatha Soul Cauldron Ingus or Iron Apprentice both enter with a counter, and then these give you infinite red mana. But what are we doing with the infinite mana? We're winning the game with Crawling Barons or Den of the Bugbear. 
Interesting. Obviously, it sucks for decks like this that Walking Ballista is banned. Um, they should have just banned Heliod instead of Ballista, I think. But the ship has sailed on that, of course. And then we have Looter Scooter, Enti, and Lightning Axe and Emery to get the Ingus in the yard. I think all of this looks pretty cool. I will say the mana would be a lot better if we weren't playing Enti, but maybe Enti is just a little too important. I like that we get to be a Fable deck. I think so. I, I think my kind of first impression is that you probably have too many of the artifact combo enablers. Okay. Oh, Stone Coil Serpent is also that's also your payoff. It's an just an infinite power creature. Um, can we not play Endless One? As like like I like that Stone Coil Serpent is like by itself a payoff. Endless One is certainly much worse. Dude, I, I swear the click it takes longer to click through the combo every time we do it. Mr. Hydroelectric, I think you're right. And this one has a few options on artifact for Emory, yeah. I mean, you could just not splash blue. I don't know how important the sideboard counter spells are. They're probably pr pretty important. But if you don't, like, Emory's, like, not a very good card, and it's your only blue card in the main deck. And, um... You know, you're, you're a deck with, like, four colorless lands and four um, Den of the Bugbears. So being being monocolored would be pretty valuable, I think. Is it better to right-click each time? Yeah, you know what? It probably just is. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, Emory's just not very good. And I, I think I would probably just be playing four Serpent to Endless One because I just, like, your, your combo is already three cards. The fact that, the fact that you kind of need to have like an untapped creature land as your win condition is it's like nice that it's a land, but it's kind of just tough that it's another card. And so like, instead of playing iron apprentice, having endless one is just like a one card infinite power creature is pretty cool. I don't think that there's another option that really comes to mind. Cancer folks, isn't it? Isn't it awful? Yeah. I do think the right click strat probably is the, the move. It's also kind of funny because like you you can you can right click while it's lagging. You can right click while it's lagging, and so once it stops lagging, that click registers. Like here, I I've already right clicked. I've already right clicked, and I and then. Well, that was the one time I didn't do it. <laughs> we didn't kick a trainer yet. There's actually a spot where we could have, like maybe should have. So I. Make sure this is not clicked. Click done. I'm very thankful in that first league. We just basically never drew. <laughs> never drew with selective memory. And it's Vire with uh, 20 bucks. That's for another deck tech. Happy to take a look. Maybe save it for the next selective memory we play, huh? Um, my opponent's got two cards in their hand. Um, their Valakids are islands. So it's, it's like I'm not dead to a scape shift. I can counter a two or a three mana spell. Eldrazi Tron. Cool. So I, 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 I do like these builds. These are the builds I like. I like the builds that are not playing Emrakul. Not because I don't think Emrakul is good, but I think Emrakul takes up five slots in your deck. Four Saga and a Cookbook, and then also a Cookbook of the sideboard. That you just don't have to play because Breaker of Creation is, is quite good. I actually like this. Um, I like this main deck Ulamog you're playing. I think that it is also really, really nice. Um... I think the mana looks the mana looks good. I will say when I was playing this archetype, the Seagate Wreckage won me a lot of games against Jeskai. Okay, let's let's get a trophy prediction. We are currently seven and one on the day with this deck. Best performing deck probably this week. Okay, let's keep this. Although maybe not so good against Jeskai because they'll bring in consigns. Should have saved uh, the deck tech for the uh, memory clicks. Uh, I, I I'm gonna actually restart Magic Online here because it, it like it actually does get laggier every single time we try to click through the combo. But hopefully we can get a trophy, a trophy for charity today. Yeah, usually we don't experience the memory leak so issue, but it might just be more like much more of a factor in the stack. So mostly looking for lands with this auger, I think. Although I guess we don't really need them because of the 
the Lotus Bloom coming down. Although maybe we're getting snared. Not getting snared. Having two offensive counter spells against Demir is really big in a game like this. I think I'll take the land over the Selective Memory. Yeah, Selective Memory League. One card on the top with Consider. Playing Bloodstained Mire, passing the turn. Taking this down. I play this tapped, and I, I, I guess I'll attack for one. If my opponent casts a creature this turn, not sure how often I'm countering it. I'll, maybe I should have countered a Fatal Push, because I just like want to have the, the Flare as an offensive counter spell for next turn. Kind of a weird dynamic. I think we would not counter spell a Murktide. We might counter spell a Frog. Kind of how I feel right now. How this do against Nadu if it was legal? I mean, probably okay. Probably okay, but like, Nadu's pretty, you know, it was Nadu. All right, if you want, okay, it looks like we have another deck tech or another 25 bucks from Mastal. Keeping, keeping the pace of the stream appropriate while we okay the lag is so much better since we restarted we're learning but if you want to go ahead and post your deck tech in the chat if that was for deck tech we will get it going okay well we will also definitely be restarting in between every selective memory now this is so much better it's like it's probably four times faster the right click tech is also pretty good Um, I actually probably will leave both Jace and Thassa's Oracle in my deck here. Especially with the extra Lotus Blue mana. It's got seven cards in their hand. Oh, it's so much faster. Let's go. A big part of being a Magic Online streamer is having played on the client for like 12 years. <laughs> and understanding. <laughs> She's like... She's like a, a, a 2002 Honda Accord. You just got to know how to treat her. All right. So we have a Jace and a Thassa's Oracle as the only two cards left in our deck. If I reach 5k, would I stop playing the One Ring for a week as a protest? Uh, no. <laughs> but I'll make a YouTube short saying the ring should be banned. Just tuned in. It feels so slow. Okay. Well, imagine the last match. Imagine about, about four times slower. <laughs> and that, that's about how it's been. All right, opponent, we have at least two zero mana counter spells available. And, okay, we have two zero mana counter spells and a mana counter spell available. So you have to have four counters here. I guess two fatal pushes would do it. This is mono blue, no fun pile. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun except for the times where selective memory is on the stack. Those are the times where I'm not having much fun. I guess I... Could have just cast counter spell, huh? Come on, fight with me! Fight with me! <laughs> Let's get a bigger stack. There we go. There we go. Let's fight. Come on. I know you have more. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> All right, on the draw. I'm tempted to donate AK, so it's going to be. Well, you only have to donate. Seven hundred and seven seven point five k, quite a steal, <laughs> quite a steal, and it goes to a good cause. Yeah, so far it seems like we're pretty favored against Demir Game One, but then they get to bring in a bunch of consigns and stuff, cut a bunch of pushes. We'll see. I guess we're gonna keep this. Surprise with a 33. Thank you. Welcome back.
I love that moment because you know blue players like to slow roll for two seconds, but you're completely in phase because <laughs> you do that. Something else you're good. I mean, I was hoping they had two more pitch cards. That would have been awesome. Shave beard equals mustache only, or beard equals nude face. Uh, I was I was gonna do nude face, but I I suppose you could you could choose mustache only if you donate seven thousand dollars to uh to get us there. That seems fair to me. You need to draw some uh, creatures to have some zero mana flares up. We could pro oh well, I mean that's a like zero mana counter. I don't think we need to go so in right this second. There's like a, a somewhat reasonable chance my opponent will next turn um cast a threat. Yeah, I think I'm not bad. Just counter this. Maybe we can get something out of their hand. The, the Bowmaster also doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, like if that eats the snare, that's that's fine, I think. Moxie. Okay, again, sorry. I I don't I don't know. <laughs> this is that went to me, Moxie, not to the charity. Maybe your shit, but you can uh, hit me with your chef's table, cooks new brew, or name your next tiny leader's general. I don't have a deck list good for good cause. Name my next tiny leader's general. That's quite the challenge. How about this? Let's flash in hydroelectric specimen have a blue creature for flare and if i was going to build a tiny there's deck i was probably just got to be asmo i would think although zusa was really undefeatable back when i used to play tiny leaders okay five cards in their hand i'm casting a belcher they have three mana. Not the easiest for them to have two relevant counter spells. They need to have counter spell pierce or counter spell force of negation. They have a replicated consign. So we'll go ahead and just let that go. Four cards still in their hand. One bad thing is that if my opponent has a Merktide Regent, we'll be dead to it next turn because it'll be eight plus ten, and I'll be at exactly ten. No, I don't have us. <laughs> Uh, so I have a drop of my hand right now to counter a Merktide. Thankfully, they don't seem to have one. Five cards in their hand still. Oh, now I have a seven drop. So let's cast this and then uh, see. So, yeah, I this is kind of weird. I, I think I am actually supposed to not play the Seagate Wreckage so that I can shoal a Merktide. It does make me weaker to another spell pierce. It didn't exactly seem like... Maybe don't play that many spell pierces usually. Yeah, I mean, if they just have two more counters up, which it's a good chance they do, we're going to be pretty cooked. I have game three on the play. All right, now I'll play this tapped. Right, deck tech very is always. <laughs> Moxie, think of the 25 also, and Simon, think of the 20. Let's go. Yeah, they have four, four cards in their hand right now. I have six life points left. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to cast this, uh, this Thassa's Oracle and try to stabilize. There's one thing about Bowmasters. We have a lot of creatures that just like kind of ignore this card. But Masters is actually like quite bad against me. Take a selective memory. Four cards in their hand, huh? Seems like a good spot to flare.
Going to be a close one. Uh, they have three cards in their hand. They've used one spell pierce, three counter spells. I'm going to cast a selective memory. Kind of hope it just gets countered. Nice. <laughs> Let's see about game three. Yeah, I'm getting a 404 or 400 on your deck tech, Simon. Okay, so down to two. They have two cards in their hand. We need to draw an Augur or an Otter here. Can't teachings for anything. Just two mana, two power, getting there. But you would Augur and Otter. We're kind of in good shape, honestly. It's kind of weird. Okay, going to click submit. Let's go. I'm gonna keep this. I've been I've been preferring to um, just play a tap land instead of untap land for preordain early. But I think the presence of Orcish Bowmaster is gonna change my attitude on that. Definitely kind of painful to bolt this in though. It's gonna keep the flare of denial. This, these like proactive counter spells are very important, and we do have a, a two drop. That looks like it worked for me, Simon. I'll try to save it for a, select, a selective memory. So no selective memory. I think I'm going to take a shoal over second flare or lotus bloom or seagate. Always cool just to have four options on your thunder trap trainer. So why don't we show this pitching Jawari Disruption? Could maybe be better to sack the flare. Oh no, so the show was the known information. Never mind. Okay. Um kind of weird, but I almost just want to get aggro. Like, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to cast Hydro Electric Specimen, and if they want to sit back all game on a bunch of counter spells, then we're just going to hit them for two every turn. Although, this looks like a great spot to tap out for Selective Memory. Yeah. Kind of weird to pivot like this so much, but they only have two mana up. Okay, so we're going to excel. So let's let's take a look at Simon's deck. This is titled, I have the remarkable talent of only brewing decks to lose throughout the skies. Very relatable. Oh, no. Power conduit. Oh, my, my precious baby. Okay, so you're playing Mono White Saga, a more artifact focused with power conduit, an archetype that we do love so dearly. I will say I kind of like the idea of like restoration, returning, guide, and pride. I think that that's very fun. I I would almost definitely be trying. I, I love playing Sunken Citadel, Monumental Hinge. I think that that is super fun, super powerful package of cards. I would probably play three Sunken Citadels and one that and not play the Aganjo probably, so I could get in at least at least six fields in the deck. Potentially would like to play seven. Six is maybe a good place to be. Um, you probably want to play Sun Cleanser over Flare of Fortitude in the side in the side for the Wrath of Skies, since Wrath of Skies is hitting a lot of your non-creature permanents. Or wait, is Flare of Fortitude? Oh, I didn't realize Flare was all permanents. I guess I should have known it was an MH three card. It maybe Flare is better. Because the problem with Sun Cleanser is like they just get to sit on the Wrath of Skies until they can get rid of your Sun Cleanser and then you lose. Um, I don't like main deck needle if you are playing the one ring yourself. So I probably would just sideboard that unless you feel like there's a lot of yog moth, uh, that you want to be ready for, which at the moment doesn't seem like there is. Also, we're going to leave both Oracle and, uh, Jason or deck here. Of course. Could maybe believe also a flare, but the problem is we're not like presenting a win next turn. Seems like a little weird to just give them a turn. Probably. 
the lag on the supposed atrocious. What's funny is it's much better right now than it was. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't think I've got a ton of like constructed criticism. I, I I will say, I wouldn't play the needle. I want to do the the fields. Oh, you have the extra fields in the side. It's interesting. I might play like the fa like white orchid phantoms in the side of the extra instead of the extra fields. I like being able to play sanctifier. I probably play one more damping sphere in the board. Wait, how are you activating Haywire Might? The one of Springleaf Drum? That's not enough. You have Sung and Citadel on green sometimes? Yeah, I don't think I'd play the Haywire Might with only one Springleaf Drum to use it with. All right, so I'm hoping we draw Oracle instead of Jace because we have double counterspell. We need, we need to have both here so that we're not just losing to a consign. Oh, there's a forest. Yeah, I just don't think I want to have, play a forest in, like, my entirely mono-white deck for, like, this express purpose, you know? Was better than a Vils, yeah. Uh, I think I'm just gonna, just gonna put that on top. <laughs> uh... They pitched a Merc Tide. It's like if they don't have anything else in their hand this turn, right? Because like, because like if we don't counter, if we counter, that's playing around them having nothing else. But it that does if they have nothing else, it doesn't matter because we'll just top deck anything. We'll flare anything they top deck. If they don't have anything, they don't have anything for next turn. Um, so yeah, I think we just just wait a turn. Okay, that is nothing. I like holding back for one of Ragavan. They they have no red mana in their deck. And there's like a weird world maybe where they like evoke subtlety again <laughs> and then uh that gets there and we like actually beat down. Now it looks like they do have consign. So we can't can't beat the the consign with the flare. Um and so they are going to get to draw an extra card with this frog too, but we do get to go for Jace with consign up next turn. They have three cards in their hand, drawing up to four right now. Probably should have resized the magic online window, huh? Okay, I will flare. And they will force. GG was not able to beat force counterspell, consign snare, subtlety. Uh, wait, there's more, right? I guess that was uh, yeah. barely anything. <laughs> barely anything. All right. So two, uh, both of our losses today have been Dimir Frog. We did beat them once. I think we've won. Have we won every game one? No trophy. Let's see if we get back-to-back -back four ones. Like, our strategy of just not having any cyborg cards for our worst matchup is probably not where we need to to be. Jace is really in this hand here. I'm thinking I'm going to bottom it. With double preordain, I, I think I have faith in our ability to find a payoff. Let's rise here. Add some white and maybe play tough. Well, we can't really... Our, our white fixing is not going to be very good, right? Because of the way we have to construct our deck. Easy bottom both of those. Oh, and it did reveal Gigantha. You know, we haven't played against uh, Energy at all today. We played against yesterday seems nice. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you want... Flusterstorm might be better than Defense Grid. Not sure. Well, we just need to dig for a payoff. And have not been able to find it yet. Now, because we have a Thassa's Oracle in our hand, we'll be able to win immediately if we are able to find um, Selective Memory. It is maybe a little unlucky to 
double preordain and not find one of your eight payoffs. Maybe we'll still find it though. We also can try to Solyndi Vision into um, Selective Memory. We have one Lotus Bloom coming down next turn, the other one coming down the turn after, although that is probably not going to be as relevant, of course. Now, hopefully just draw a big payoff card here, which we're not quite lucky enough to do. So we'll get, I think, six looks at Selective Memory, and we'll be able to win the game if we find it. My opponent probably not going to be able to present lethal this turn. Yeah, so I, th I think we're just going to go all in on vision hitting and then feel like we got pretty unlucky. Oh, if we brick. Maybe kind of lucky that they skipped through combat. They opened on seven life here. Corn chip, did I say cor thank you, Corn Chips, for the 57. I, I'm not sure if I already said that or not. Seven looks. Yeah, we also have draw for turn, of course. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Now this wouldn't be as good if we did if we just didn't have Oracle already in our hand, but we now we have the uh, Lotus Bloom coming down, so we just win the game. Very fun when you're just like MDFC is like the random game winner like this. Tech tech from us. Thank you. Great timing as we we're about to cast a selective memory. Worst timing if I draw a Goblin Charbelcher. I just want to play Soren, please. Okay, we'll see what we can do. I also want to play Soren. I, I've been really wanting to work on a um, a Martyr build of Soren. But you, we have Black White with three copies. I will say black white got so much worse with the grief ban. I was like, I was like liking black white with nightmare, solitude, grief, and now I'm just not sure. Okay, let me also. Is it? Is it? Maybe it's too late to restart Magic Online. I have been forgetting to restart in between selective memories. It is kind of weird too. Like last league, it's like all Belchers. This league, it's all memories. It would have been nice to have like a bit of a Belcher break in between all the memories. Um, looking at this list. I, you know, I do like Soren. Soren has a lot of potential. It seems like I would almost certainly play the first Chthonian Nightmare in a deck with a Johnny and uh, and Soren and Orcish Bowmaster. I'm not sure exactly what this deck is doing. So, I mean, I guess maybe it's super wild. Maybe the um, Presence of Thoughtseize is good. I probably could both both Dothy Voidwalkers for two Nightmares. I've been thinking a lot that Soren would be much stronger if the um, if the lands that entered untapped and gained two life if they just gained three life instead, just be able to uh, sorry just be able to go black source Soren, that card flip immediately Soren would be really good, but they gain two and Soren is pretty pretty bad, and so I think if you want to play Soren trying to figure out a martyr proc deck is probably going to be your better option like be more white based. With like a splash for Soren, maybe some cyber cars, maybe for some Shieldreds. Shieldred could still be playable in some number in like a black white build, but you're gonna be like a more normal martyr proc list. Um well, you could maybe play Monumental Hinge plus Sunken Citadel plus a bunch of fields, and then Monumental Hinge could find you Soren and the One Ring and maybe Ameria if you play Ameria, but Ameria is pretty bad. Maybe you could play Elish Norn if Elish Norn is not that good either. Although Elish Norn is like it's like kind of okay. All right, did I miss any of them? Did I miss any? Don't think I did. Oh, yeah, cling to dust seems very good, Soren. I agree. Cyber looks good i don't i'm not a huge meat hook massacre fan but this is like kind of the best meat hook massacre deck <laughs> i've seen um with the sorens and 
Went to beat the mirrors. Okay. Still win through the uh, discharge here. I even like, for some reason, like the trespassers are kind of speaking to me too here. I, th that that match goes out to the uh, chatter who said that they were laughed at because they said that they had a good or they had a bad Belcher matchup as Boros. So we're going to bring in the Into the Flood Malls and then cut the Jace and... I think we go down a flare since they kill our two drops pretty often. Shrimp of Preordain also. Yeah, Children of Corliss is really cool too. I've been wanting to play Children of Corliss plus Necro for a little while and not been able to figure that out. Okay, I'm optimistic about our second 4-1 in a row. I'm going to go use the restroom real quick before we finish this up. Okay, so... I like having preordained with Lotus Bloom. This allows for a turn four win. We have two untapped lands. I think this is a keep. It's maybe a little slow, but they, they did mulligan. I think maybe I would think a little bit more about this if uh, they were not on the mulligan. But they're a bit more they're a bit less likely to have the turn four kill. Yes, thank you for reminding me to restart magic online. I will say this deck has been sweet, exciting, powerful, fresh and is unfortunately very hampered by the magic online ui uh, at the moment i'm like pretty seriously considering it for like my next modern tournament but i think i'm pretty unlikely to register it for like leagues anytime soon just because of how uh slow the clicking is it's a little bit of feedback there i guess so they have a turn one ocelot pride and then we have drawn Oh, we drew Shoal for turn. That's actually a great draw. Now, I would really prefer... I would really prefer to not use my Preordain because I want to be able to just go untapped fourth land into uh, shape, shape, Selective Memory, Preordain, and Oracle, cast Oracle. Don't know if that's something that I'm going to be having the luxury of doing. How well does this deck grind into long game? I mean, pretty well. Your deck is like all counter spells and you have a lot of like the cheap cantrip creatures to two for one. I think I think that like the grindier decks are good matchups. Maybe that's more important to say. Hoping to draw a two mana creature here. Counter spell. Okay, let's try keeping up counter spell. Do you ever slide out MDCs? Yeah, sometimes I'll sh shave a waterlog grove. Jeff with the 42 months, let's go. Thank you so much. Getting hit for six down to 10. Seven down to three next turn. I guess we're actually gonna be just too slow basically every time in this game without having a creature to block. Oh, I did miscount actually. So we might be just fast enough, we'll see. So, I mean, we're going to counter whatever they play for the most part, and then they're going to have one more point of power end of turn. And then if we can go tap land into untap land, we can win. The problem is, I guess, doing that. And now they have got two more points of power, so now we won't be able to bolt in two turns. So back to looking like an L, I guess. Maybe instead of Preordain, something at instant speed. I mean, Preordain is so much better than everything else. It just sees, like, twice the cards that Consider does. Let's... It just has to be Preordain, I think. I mean, we only, we're all, we are only playing two. You could play Talismans over Preordains, maybe. Okay, so let me just make sure. So this is three, two, four, five, six, seven. Seven down to four. Okay, I did miscount. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, play this tapped. And then um, hopefully they go like land three drop that we shoal. And if we draw one of our untapped MDFCs, we win next turn. And if we don't, we lose. And then we go to game three. I think you need to use the shoal on the prior turn one. Yeah, maybe. On the play for game three definitely is a lot easier. They only have one energy. Sorry, I know it's blocking there. Which side? Yeah, we want them to go land, flage, land, moon. 
Okay, now we're hoping for no lightning bolt on their side. We're hoping to draw one of our untapped NBFCs. I think we have 10 more in our deck right now, so 20% chance to, to get there. I guess they could also have Reprieve. Reprieve has been kind of a popular cyborg card out of Boros. I'm like liking it more. It just like buys you one turn and then you win a lot of the time. Uh, I mean, we'll cast the Preordain, I guess, but pretty cooked. To game three we go. Why not Preordain? So the thing is, we need the Preordain to win the game next turn. Casting casting Selective Memory doesn't win the game. It puts it makes our library just a Thassa's Oracle. So with Lotus Bloom coming off Suspend, next turn we can use our seven mana to cast Selective Memory, then cast Preordain, draw the Oracle, then cast the Oracle. Shouldn't we have bottom to try to draw Oracle? Oh, yes. So I got I missed that out of just drawing the Oracle there. Although we didn't have enough mana. We didn't we still have to have to land. It's, we don't have enough mana. It's seven mana total. Okay. Um Yeah, I was gonna keep this. We have three lands plus two bounce spells plus a blocker plus memory. Feeling really good about this one. Immigrant, 19 months, tonight's the wedding. Congrats. Have a nice wedding. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I've said this on stream, but me and Esther uh, have picked a date and we've booked a venue. We're going to be doing October 26th of next year. And we are uh, deep in the trenches of wedding planning. Rancid Mind, 49 months. Thank you. Welcome back. It's six mana to Selective Oracle if it's top deck. Well, if you not if you cast the Preordain. Selective Oracle Preordain is still seven. So we still needed to find a land in the middle of that, right? Almost tempted to not play Augur this turn so that we can have the fourth land for untapped for the memory, but maybe we'll find one anyways. So we can have Shoal to counter a two drop. I think I'm just going to take the flare. Or oh, you're saying Oracle is another out compared to an MDFC. I, I understand. So into the Flood Mall now can maybe bounce the Static Prison to eat the Ocelot Pride next turn. Second Pride always pretty scary, of course. It's kind of okay. So there's the untapped land for the into the Flood Mall next turn. All right, let's give them a tapped fish here. It's kind of bad that they might be able to copy that token though. A stream in Oct 25th. Yeah, we, we wanted to do 10 25 2025, but it was booked. All right, so another one of these. So they have one, two, three, four, five. This will be the eighth permanent. Don't think we're supposed to flare this, although it is it is a thought because of the city's blessing. Yeah, we'll just go. Give them another fish. They can have it. And then uh, flare this bombardment. Maybe shoal the bombardment, but probably flare if we found the, even if we found the shoal. I don't think I need another counter spell. I don't think I need another untapped land. I guess we'll just take the land. So they're going to put a sixth token into play. One short of Kitty's Blessing. We would have probably lost if they had had it. Now we're going to be not dead to a bolt, not dead to a flage, dead to basically just Blood Moon. Dang, I just restarted too. It's been a fun journey of clicking through Selective Memory with y'all today. Thanks again to everybody who's donated. 
Very proud of y'all. $2,600. Let's freaking go. Yeah, I also did two bombardment, but I mean, less likely than the other cards. Or sorry, yeah, did the bombardment and moon. Just a few more. Is there a single trap for this league? No, what's very funny is every single one of our league's last our, our, our wins last league was Charbelcher. Every single one this league was um uh selective memory. Just kind of whichever one you draw, I think. There's the kitty's blessing. They have they can put me to to, to four or sorry, to yeah, to four, not then to a flage. The fact that they're just like surveilling here, I think is good news for me. Although maybe they're just gonna play a moon. Come on. Well, that'll uh, that'll do it. Maybe we need to bring in Force of Negation for Moons in this matchup. Yeah, I think we probably need to be bringing in Force of Negations. Have one Mana Morphos. <laughs> I thought we can cast it. Okay. Uh, Dedge. Well, seven three with the deck overall. Still a deck I'm liking a lot, especially just because it's like the sideboard has a lot to flush out. You can change some stuff about the main deck, but overall, pretty consistent, pretty resilient, pretty powerful. Let's bring the standing dust down. Thanks, Ryan. Ha 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 ha.